you're watching my real life vlogs. Welcome back, welcome back, and happy Easter. Well, when y'all are watching this, Easter will have come and gone, but you know what I'm saying, real time and everything. Hey, Sansa girl. Oh, girl, you almost knocked over the lantern. Sansa went to the groomer. Come here, let them see. She's got her cute little Easter bandana. Oh, they put a little bow, so cute. She got de-shedded, and then they gave her Easter egg nails. Let me see your nails, Sansa. <laughs> cute little Easter egg nails. These are cute. Trying to get her out of the mix. Relax, girl. So you guys know today is our Easter brunch that we're gonna be hosting here at the house, and I started all my prep work last night, and I'm so glad I did. And so this morning, I'm just tying up loose ends and getting ready to start preparing some of these dishes. Brunch is my favorite meal to host. It's always the, the quickest, easiest, the most fun, the most beautiful. So let me show you guys the layout. So here is a quick view of the kitchen entirely. And let me just show y'all, okay, the dollar store stuff, how it all sort of came out. So these are the plates and chargers that I got from the Dollar Tree, y'all. And then this is just a little Easter egg thing. I kind of broke it in half and used the top part just as decor for the plate settings. And I really like the way it came out, y'all. I decided to do the dinner napkin twine uh, trick for um, the flatware. And um, I just think it just adds like a really chic vibe. And then we have this Dollar Tree bouquet with the little <laughs> Easter bunny picks in there and the Easter egg picks. So I think that turned out really pretty. I ended up just putting some of that Easter grass down at the bottom. Oh, let me turn the music down a bit. I'm in here grooving out. Mm -mm -mm. Mm -mm. Look at Salsa. <laughs> All right, table two is over here. I did the same napkin trick and then I just added some of those Easter Dollar Tree decor to the table. Nothing too serious, y'all. And then these are the Easter baskets for my children. <laughs> This is Ava's Easter basket and this is Anne's Easter basket. That's Ava up there waking up. <laughs> She's having her morning nap or trying to fight it. And then these are the little Easter treat boxes for the cousins who are coming over. Look, I got my notepad here with all the dishes. So usually what I do the night before any type of hosting where I'm cooking and putting food out, I like to already figure out where everything is gonna go in what container and kind of the flow and then that way the day of I just focus on preparing the food and getting it into the containers versus trying to do both because I found that that just takes so much time and you will be scrambling. So I got my little famous three-tier food display here that I always use and I'm going to put the breakfast meats on this. I'm going to put my scrambled eggs in here, my breakfast potatoes in here. I got a little garnish section here for the waffles which are going to go in here. We're going to do fried chicken in here. Oh yeah and some more of the Dollar Tree decor. I decided to just put these little baskets out just kind of here and there. I got some deviled eggs that I prepped last night that are gonna go in here. Isn't that so cute? Yeah. We're of course gonna have mimosas, so we're gonna have our bubbly in this thing. This is the little drink station here. Girl, I put a rug here, removed the seats because I don't want nobody trying to sit over here. So I'll just keep this as more of like a grab and go station. So we're gonna have sweet tea and we got orange juice to go with the mimosas. And then I also have a carafe of just lemon water. And I just really love how the little decorations all came together. So cute. You would never even think this was from the dollar store. And then we have some treats, little cupcakes in here. I didn't want to go too crazy with the desserts because we are having waffles but I did want something for the kids so we just got some little cupcakes and peeps and y'all this cake display case is so special because Anthony's grandmother actually gave this to me it is crystal I am so freaking excited about it I just hope I do not freaking break it but this is my first time using it y'all know I'm not a baker but I am gonna probably be getting into it now because I have this beautiful cake pan and I just love the gold trim on there it's just so perfect for our spread today so thank you granny so yeah as y'all can see these lights are still up okay but they're not staying up I've made my decision okay I ended up ordering some different lights from Bed Bath and & Beyond and I will be showing those to you all I'm really excited about it I'm excited to really just see how they look out of the box so I didn't want to be bothered with like anything up here over the island you know when I'm about to be preparing food so I figured I just leave them up plus they're kind of cute for Easter they're like little Easter baskets <laughs> So I'll be tackling this project um, a little bit later because I do have some other stuff that I'm gonna be working on in this kitchen. Wait till I tell y'all. Y'all gonna think I'm absolutely insane, but we're gonna have an insane time. It's gonna be so much fun. So stay tuned. I'll, I'll fill you guys in more on that later. And so y'all know with all of this stuff out, especially the Easter baskets with all the little grass and sensory <laughs> stuff, this would be an ant fest down here, okay? So the strategy that we're using this time around is just to keep her upstairs. We don't even want her to know what is even down here. And so far it's been working. The morning is 
coming along and she has not even come down the stairs at all. She's been hanging out upstairs with Dadi on her iPad playing with Ava. She doesn't even know what's going on down here and we are trying to keep it that way because y'all picture her getting these tulip petals, getting into the cupcakes, getting into the Easter baskets, girl, getting into my little grassy display over here. It would be a disaster. So we're just trying something different this time versus constantly following her around and trying to get her to not be interested. We are just going to not even let her know what's going on and we'll see how that plays out for us. I'm really hoping, really hoping because I don't want her messing up stuff. <laughs> um, and then this is our waffle station that's gonna be getting kicked off very soon here. I pretty much got everything I needed for this brunch from Walmart, you guys, and I wanted to try this waffle mix, okay? It's got the cinnamon churro theme. I'm like, what is this gonna be like? So we're just gonna try it. Just set up my little fryer. Y'all, not me this excited. I really think in my previous life, I worked in a restaurant kitchen. I really do. Like, this is so much fun to me. I'm gonna fry the shrimp in this thing, and I usually take it outside, but I'm just gonna do it inside today since I'm not frying that much. And we're about to get these waffles going. I mixed up my batter. It's ready, okay? Let the cooking begin. This is so much fun. <laughs> Real quick, the waffles came out pretty good. Cooking them in my Farberware waffle maker, I really like it. Like, it cooked them so well, it did not make a mess. I'm impressed, I really like this. It was only $19.99 at Walmart. Okay, everything is done, and we got um, a little while before people start to get here, so I'm just gonna put everything in the oven to stay warm. The only thing I'm gonna save to the last minute is the deep fried um, shrimp, the battered shrimp, and the scrambled eggs. These are the potatoes, breakfast potatoes. And these are the sausages. What else is going in here? And I'm gonna put my four layers of bacon in here. I hope the paper towels are gonna be okay. That might start a fire. <laughs> Let me take the bacon off the towels. But I had them like draining in layers like this as they were coming out of the oven because I did cook these in the oven. This is two whole packs of bacon. Okay, let's put it in like this, that's safer. Uh, I'm gonna leave it uncovered so they can stay crispy. And then I'm gonna put the waffles in here as well so they can stay crispy. And I'll just keep an eye on this stuff to make sure ain't nothing cooking for real, but it's just on the setting keep warm so it's not, it shouldn't be cooking. Okay, got the wig on, finally ready. I'm late but nobody's here. Come on, Ann. You wanna come downstairs with mommy? Let me see Ann. Her little pink dress. Uh, I got the wrong size, it's too big, so I just put a safety pin in the back. I don't know how I let that happen, but I got on my little Target dress. Let me show y'all. I didn't think about shoes, so I'm wearing slides that don't even go. Empty house, nobody's here. Everybody's gonna be late. I'm having some La Marca Prosecco. Let me show y'all my dress. So it actually has pockets. I didn't realize that when I got it, but that's kind of nice. Girl, I'm just wearing these sporty Versace slides that don't even go, but I'm like, well, at least they're pink. I need to really invest in like some nice, flat, casual shoes for moments like this. Um, Ava went to sleep for her nap. I guess I wasn't really paying attention to the time. I'm like, well, yeah, she would be deep in a nap at this time that we're supposed to be starting this brunch. So I had started her bath and everything as I was gonna bathe her and get her dressed, but she ended up falling asleep on me. So I will do that to her with her when she wakes up a little bit later. Her naps are not really long, by the way, the ones in the middle of the day. She'll sleep for probably like maybe two hours at the most, at the most. And then she'll be ready for her afternoon feeding. So yeah, this is what I'm doing. I had a grass scare, so I had put the deviled eggs out right here and um, and had pulled some of the grass part out because she is a little bit obsessed with the Easter grass. So she only pulled out a little bit, so I threw that part away. Um, but it was only a little bit, as you can see, because it hasn't really affected the look of the presentation, so it's fine. But yeah, we had a little scare because she got away from me when I was in the bathroom trying to get this wig together. She came downstairs and started discovering all of the Easter decorations, so I caught it just in time. But yeah, just for the future, we do know now that when we do stuff like this, keeping her upstairs is the best bet and this time proved it right. Just keep her upstairs because once she has her heart set on messing with it, she's gonna mess with it, you know? So we did good today, just a small scare. I'm gonna actually get started. Oops, you guys can't see me. I'm actually gonna get started on some of these uh, last two things that I was gonna cook closer to when people got here, which is the shrimp and the eggs. So I'm still waiting for the eggs, but I think I can start 
the truck process because this oil has to heat up and all that. So I think I'm just gonna start it now. I love these little portable fryers. Usually I will do this stuff outside or in the garage. But I'm like, today I'm not gonna go through all that. I don't even feel like setting up the table. Um, we'll just do it right here. We're not frying that much, so it should be fine. So all you do is just, and this is also another Farberware product from Walmart, so you just like plug it in and you're pretty much ready to go after that. So, I love it. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> Girl, people are always late to brunch, always. And freaking love this thing. Okay, brunch is served. We got our potatoes, we got our scrambled egg, we got our treats, we got waffles, chicken, deviled eggs, we got some bubbly. And fruit. Erica! Yeah. Oh. Yeah. 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 Happy Easter family! Happy Easter. Yay! Love rib. Oh, did Mumu bring this? And is eating bacon and cupcakes. Here, we need to use your hair. Let's use this one. It's a big one. Yes, we gotta wipe the mouth. Yes, we yes. There we go. Wipe the hands and mouth, okay? We got icing everywhere, sweet girl. Would you like a chicken burger? I can go home and eat soup. Smart woman. Starting by you. And happy Easter! Beautiful girls! <laughs> you look so cute. Oh my goodness. Can you say hi? I'm so cute. Y'all see Anthony trying to wear his pink shirt? It's Anthony and all y'all baby. Yeah, you want to put your coat in the thing so I don't feel like food? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what the hell is going on in here? Y'all like honestly, Drake, I, Kendrick Lamar. <laughs> Make people rap. I like that. I do love it. Sweet girls. Okay, follow me. So we've got one for you. <laughs> one for you. <laughs> and one for you. Yay! <laughs> you did? Oh, I'm glad. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning, it's the next day and I'm on my way out. Y'all see this hair? This is my real hair. Looking a little dry, but we're gonna force another look out of this old braid out, okay? Got my water, got my coffee to go. Okay, let's head out. I'll talk to y'all in the car. So I'm sitting here with the radio turned on and they're reporting some trending news, right? Some football player in Dallas, um, caused a big car wreck doing some drag racing on broad daylight and they were like yeah he was in a Lamborghini truck and he was racing a Corvette and I'm just sitting there, all I can think of is Lamborghini truck can't do nothing with that Corvette <laughs> but oh yeah hopefully nobody got hurt yeah uh dangerous uh yeah busy over here worried about the cars involved so funny but yeah y'all last night was something else it was fun well yesterday and then it led into the night but yesterday was very very fun I had a blast it was so good being able to get together with family and all the kids got to see each other and play with each other so it was very nice it's stuff like that that's just the whole point of life you know and something like that doesn't have to be an expensive gathering right like 
I got everything from Walmart, like I told y'all. Maybe spent $130 on food. Spent $60 at the Dollar Tree to get cute little Easter stuff to decorate and to give to the kids, which by the way, they loved their little Easter boxes. So we're talking, you know, less than $200 to feed, I don't know, eight or nine people, however many there were, and to have a good time with family is priceless. So I just wanna encourage someone out there who um, hesitates with getting together with family because they think they can't afford it or they're embarrassed about this or that. Just remember, Miss Vaughn spent $200, all right, and had an impressive time, right? People were like, this is so nice, food is delicious. You know, thank you Vaughn and Anthony. It don't take a lot. Sometimes we be talking ourselves out of stuff um, and it just be living all in our own heads. And that's some of the stuff I deal with as well and I specifically work with, with my therapist on, you know, creating our own narratives in our head that are kind of self-sabotaging, right? These things in our head, it's like we don't want them there. They're bad for us. They mean us no good, but we put them there, right? We put them there. But anyway, y'all, so I am actually on my way to a doctor's appointment that I forgot all about. <laughs> um, so I'm just heading over here now. Hopefully I won't be too, too late. I'm already kind of behind schedule a little bit, but hopefully it'll be okay. It's an appointment to follow up um, the fibroids and stuff that were present during my pregnancy that I was telling y'all about. I'm trying to be, you know, I'm trying to stay on top of that. We're trying to monitor the growth of them, make sure they're not doing something else, make sure it's not something more serious than a benign growth and things like that. And this puts me in the mind of um, a YouTuber and Instagrammer who I was following and was near and dear to me because I really was a huge fan of her, Jessica Petway, who recently passed away from cervical cancer. And it was very sad when I learned about that. Uh, somehow the details of her condition hit the internet and it was it was said that she was originally diagnosed with fibroids and then it was later uh, found that it was actual cervical cancer I don't know enough about it to speak on it so I don't want to speak on on that condition too much you know that family and stuff I don't know enough about it but just hearing that alone is a wake-up call for a lot of people to pay attention to reproductive health and pay attention to the different changes and things going on in their bodies and to get checked out and to advocate for oneself in in those scenarios when you're sitting down with those doctors and you're talking about your body but I kind of don't want to like use what happened to her as like a catalyst for like you know women's health you know I, I that doesn't seem fair you know a youtuber died of cervical cancer make sure you get your pap smear like I don't you know that just you know it's, it seems a little unfair and and I don't know that she would have wanted her life to be reduced to that because that just doesn't feel fair. But I do want us to keep it in mind. I don't want us to forget her and I want us to um, to acknowledge what happened to her and to continue to keep her memory alive and to uplift that family and those children. Because like I said, that was someone I followed and that I was a fan of. But yeah, shout out to all the family who came over and also helped me clean up the house and get the dishes clean and all that stuff after the gathering was over. So I appreciate that. Shout out to Ashley and Eric for helping with the baby and helping with the cleanup and all that stuff. Um, I ended up retiring pretty early last night, so I didn't stay up late. It kind of started to feel like a day party the way we were kicking it and then it kind of went into the early evening and then it was time for bed you know we were tired and stuff so I think I slept really well I ended up waking up in the middle of the night ready to start my day because that's how much rest I had gotten and I was like oh my god I gotta go back to sleep I cannot be doing this and it had started to rain and stuff too so like it rained all through the night so it's all slick and out here and everything so I'm trying to make sure I drive carefully so I'm gonna put y'all down and then I'll talk to y'all in a second Get it in, okay, getting ready to undress. <laughs> okay, y'all, we're done. That was the quickest appointment ever. It was like so, so fast. So I'm back in the car trying to get out of this parking garage that I hate driving in because it's so tight. And it's just a wonder that all these years coming to this place that I have not damaged my vehicle. It's a wonder. But I am starving, y'all. I'm very, very hungry. I cannot wait to get home and eat some of those leftovers. It's going to be perfect. We had some leftover waffles, leftover eggs, believe it or not, but I don't care about microwaved eggs. I'll eat it. And then I think we had some leftover potatoes as well. So I'm gonna be eating all of those things. So yeah. Overall, the appointment went well. I want to say this time I looked up and got a really good ultrasound tech because y'all, I be having, I, in my experience, I've had some pretty sucky ultrasound techs who are like not gentle, not telling me what they're doing, hurting me, 
and really not caring and not really showing me that they understand a woman's anatomy. And these 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 were female texts and just being really rough with me. And so in the past, I've, I've had bad experiences at this exact same clinic. So I'm glad I got a good one this time. She was so good. Explaining every part of the process, like now I'm taking a picture of the right ovary. Now I'm looking at this part. Now I see this and just walking me through it. Like, yeah, yeah, that's what I want. Like, tell me exactly what you're doing. Because while you're the professional who knows what you're doing, and I'm the patient, this is still my body that we're both experiencing right now. You know what I mean? So I think, you know, when techs understand that, they can give you a more pleasant experience. But anywho, so she didn't find anything new. So the same fibroids that had been obliterated during the pregnancy are still obliterated. Cause you know, they have a record of every ultrasound so they can see what was there and when it was there. And so as of right now, everything is still the same as it was um, right after uh, I gave birth and everything so there have been no changes so that's good news like no news is good news type of thing but we won't know it for sure until the radiologist I think is what it's called takes a look at the images and then they'll let my doctor know what they found and then my doctor will like you know debrief with me got about a week before that happens uh, where I I'll actually know the results of my of the findings um, but I feel pretty good about it you know, even the tech when she was explaining everything that she was finding and stuff, she, she seemed pretty optimistic. So, you know, we're just looking for changes. We're looking for growth and hopefully there is none, right? I've had fibroids for most of my adult life, but they've never caused a problem, never. Like it's, it's never caused any changes in my period, never. They've just always just kind of been there harmless. The issues would only ever arise, y'all I'm in Lower Wacker, so the lighting is different. <laughs> if you're from Chicago, you already know. They've only ever caused issues during pregnancy. So it just, you know, it just depends. Pregnancy does weird stuff with fibroids, so. And in the past, I would have never even dreamed of coming on here and talking to y'all about fibroids or anything going on with my reproductive organs. Honestly, I would have never, but given my age and where we are as a community and a society, you know, when it comes to black people and some of these different issues, I have felt more recently, um, more comfortable with having these kind of conversations with you guys. So whatever my results are when they come back, whether good news, bad news, or indifferent, I will be sharing it on here. We will be having open conversations. We will be talking about it. Without a doubt, I know that that's the route to go. That's the right way to go. And also this week, you guys, I'm excited. So my dad's birthday was on Easter. So we decided we would celebrate with him a little later this week. So I will bring you guys along for that. I'm thinking um, dinner, a museum visit, that kind of thing. Y'all, my dad be, <laughs> my dad be celebrating his birthdays like he's some kind of scholar. <laughs> I want to go to Egypt and explore, you know, the history of civilization. I want to go to a museum like, oh my God, he's so funny. So y'all know for his birthday last year, that's what we did. We went to Egypt. And so this year he wants to um, get some Ethiopian food, which I'm so excited about. It's going to be so much fun. I don't know if y'all know, but Ethiopian is my favorite African cuisine so far in my life. It is my absolute hands down favorite. Okay, back home had my breakfast, which was leftovers. It was so good. Let me tell y'all what I did to them waffles in order to enjoy them, okay? Because warming up and reheating waffles is not the ideal thing, but I poured some cream on it and like let the cream soak into the waffle itself and then I put it in the microwave and then I garnished it with all of the fixings as usual. And it was actually pretty good. I ain't mad at it. That's if you like, um, you know, soft waffles. Some people like crunchy waffles. In that case, put that mug in the oven. <laughs> so as you guys can see, uh, like I mentioned, the kitchen was cleaned last night. All the dishes were washed. All the big serving platters and all that stuff were cleaned. But I still have to store away some of my appliances and things, right? And I have to put some of this Easter decor away. So there's still lots to do. So I'm going to just go ahead and tackle this now. So last night um because i went to bed early so i don't really know what was going on down here fully but somebody had washed these little carafts and put them in the cabinet but they were still wet <laughs> when they got put away so i just pulled them back out and set them out to kind of air dry see that be the thing about people helping after parties that be the thing people hearts be in the right place though that's what's most important but as far as where to put things back and like how you like things to be done you have to sacrifice that if you want help. So you have to kind of choose, um, you know, what's it gonna be? <laughs> do you want the help or do you want it done your way? <laughs> I'm just keeping it real. That's why people don't be asking for help sometimes, you know, not that it's right. I'm just saying that's what be happening. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna store my fryer and waffle maker up here. Oh, this is Ann's 
cotton candy she didn't eat yesterday. She's upstairs asleep, by the way, getting the best nap of her life because she woke up way too early this morning and didn't go back to sleep, so she's getting her nap. Oh, I wanted to mention one of my subscribers made a comment and told me that I should put my coffee beans and loose tea on the upper shelf and then the mugs and glass jars at the bottom. So I just wanted to say I did it. <laughs> I was like, good idea, good idea. So it worked out. At first I thought these weren't gonna fit up here because of the handle thing here, but I was able to just put them in the front of it and it still works just fine. Good idea, and you could see it better and you know, because those ones are cuter, so they should be at the top. Just got a bunch of packages in the mail. I, I believe that at least one of them are my cabinet and drawer pulls for the laundry room and the walk-up bar, so I'm gonna be popping those on this afternoon as well. I was hoping to get a lot of this done before Ann woke up, but I don't think I'm gonna, so. I'll just focus on the cleaning for now. Did this get clean? It don't look clean. It's okay, Sansa. Must be a uh, Amazon. Okay, I couldn't just clean and let let bygones be bygones and let well enough do. I done opened up a rabbit hole for Easter, no pun. <laughs> I'm trying to reorganize under here a little bit because it has gotten out of hand over the years. It's stuff in here that ain't got nothing to do with no dining room. So I just pulled everything out and I'm just like wiping down the, the shelves and just re resetting everything, figuring out how to put this stuff in here the best way because y'all should have saw it. It was like plates all to the side, just stuff stuffed in. So I'm gonna try to address this real quick. Look at all this glitter. I gotta wipe all this down and vacuum. So I'm gonna be at it for a little bit. But the good news is that a bunch of packages got pulled in, a bunch of stuff. I think um, my pendant lights are in here and I think there's also this other big thing um, in there as well. This company had sent me this vanity. Anthony doesn't want me to put a vanity in our bathroom, but I might have to, because I'm running out of storage for like my makeup and beauty products. But um, I don't think I like it that much either, but I kind of need it. I kind of need a place to sit when I'm doing my skincare and my makeup and stuff. Okay, y'all, Anthony wants me to leave the table bare. Well, let me show y'all what I did inside the cabinets. So this one is still kind of in disarray, but at least I know where everything is and what everything is. And then over here, I'm kind of proud of this one because it makes a lot of sense how I have everything, all of my chargers and placemats, ceramics and plates and things like that. But uh, at least everything is put away. Last thing that I have to do is get the floors cleaned. I also got this table together and reset. I think I'm gonna add some gray bowls to this, we'll see. But I just need to get the um, decor stored and hit this floor because yeah. Anthony's downstairs exercising. Listen to what he's listening to. Sansa, I don't know what's wrong with him either. Okay, y'all, ignoring that, okay? Focus, 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 stay with me. Done cleaning, okay? The dishwasher is empty. All of my serving dishes and platters and everything are back in storage. So now I can officially say that chapter is closed. This is how the dining area is looking. Like I said, Anthony wanted to try it clean with no plates for a little while, so we're gonna just try the minimalist look. I did add these two bowls just to see how that would look, but pretty much, bowls or no bowls, we're just gonna keep it plain like this. Sansa's on patrol. We've been getting a lot of deliveries, so Sansa's like, let me get on it. So my pendant light's just delivered, so I'm getting ready to make the switcheroo. I'm so excited, y'all, like so excited to see how the lights look. Anthony actually picked them out first, and then, of course, I had to look around, see what was out there, see how other kitchens that look similar to ours did their, their pendant lights. And I must say, a lot of the pendant lights that I see are designed for only two, and we have three. Even yesterday when I was on FaceTime with my sister in Virginia, Okay, I was like, girl, 
you know, show me your kitchen right quick. I want to see, I, I forgot what pen and lights you guys have. And so they had some similar lights that look like the ones that were up here before, just with a little bit more ornate detail. And they only have two and they were much larger. So the fact that we have three kind of bothers me because I feel like two would have been just fine. But the guys who put the lights in, they were kind of amateur and we were just trying to help out some up and coming black electricians. So we gave them the business, but yeah, they didn't really advise us really well, but it's fine. I'm going to make it work with the three sockets that we have. So the pen and lights, I'm really excited about them y'all like I say Anthony initially picked them out so he loves them and then I saw another one of my favorite influencers Maddie James in their kitchen because now I'm looking at people's pendant lights in their kitchens now and I saw that they have a very similar set of lights and they actually have a kitchen style in terms of the cabinetry and everything that is similar to ours so I think I might have made the right decision but let's go ahead and see so I'm gonna definitely put those up and then I'm also gonna switch out the drawer and cabinet pools on my walk-up bar area I'm gonna do that now that should be pretty quick it's only six to replace as y'all can see I had to change my shirt I was getting hot honey and let me just share with you guys one more thing to complete this kitchen project right there was like a little handful of things that were living in here that I wanted to change in here in order to make this kitchen fit more of my style without having to renovate and redo the whole thing because like I mentioned before we did not have this kitchen done this was one of the things that the previous owners had done to the house in an attempt to sell it so they did this kitchen they picked the countertops they picked the butt splash they did everything in here and while we don't love it we were able to kind of get with the program of it because it wasn't terrible you know the cabinets are a nice color something that i probably would have chosen maybe not so much the the face of the cabinets but i'm like you know it's not terrible i figured it was something we could live with and we wouldn't have to spend money trying to replace it so there were just a little couple projects that i wanted to do that would make this more our style and so the first thing was switching out the drawer pulls i haven't wanted to do that for a long time i just didn't know which ones and i was so torn because i kind of wanted to do brass so the other project was to create a little bit more storage in here if you don't already have enough I always thought that this area underneath our countertop right here was just the biggest waste of space ever because as you guys can see our counter our island is not symmetrical okay so the countertop ends there at the end of that cabinet and then over here it extends out a little bit more and I'm just like why didn't they just put like shelves right here or something you know that would have just been so perfect so they didn't do it and you know they also didn't really finish the edge of that, right? The end of that. They didn't do that with any of the cabinets. They're all kind of just like flat. They should have finished it with like some ornate detail like my sister's cabinets are. But that's another story. We won't get into that. I have a DIY project where I'm going to build out my island and utilize this space right here for shelves. I'll go ahead and insert some inspiration photos for you guys so you can kind of see what I'm talking about. But for the most part with islands this large and ours is large, you should utilize some of that area for some additional storage and decor opportunities and that kind of thing. I already told my dad about the project, sent him the measurements. He's like, yep, it can be done. So I'm gonna do it myself, but I'm going to have my dad kind of help and assist, especially with some of the cutting. And I really wanna share this project with y'all because I think that is something really cool. I think it is more than doable I think I have a really simple solution for it and I want to inspire you guys in case you have a similar situation going on in your kitchen So I'm waiting on some pieces to deliver and then I'm going to share that project with y'all And so that'll be like a midweek video Okay, you all I finished over here as you can imagine it looks like the kitchen <laughs> Oh, let me turn on the light. Okay. Maybe you guys can see it better now I was over here crying my eyes out because in that drawer is a stack of obituaries and my sister's obituary is in there and I don't think I remembered that I put it in there. So I started flipping through it and reading it and y'all probably don't know but I wrote her obituary, me and my sis Kay. And yeah, reflecting on her life and stuff made me really start crying like really bad. So I'm all good now, moving on. So yeah, let's go back into the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> so I can show y'all these pendant lights. Sansa girl is, is a little skeptical. She's a little skeptical as usual, but um, here they are. Really beautiful, y'all. Mostly black. And then we have a little bit of gold in this area, which I think will be nice. So let's get started. Remember when I was bragging about having my Ikea receipt, being like, yeah, I got my receipt. I can take these back. Girl, where's the damn receipt? Where, where, where's the receipt? I don't know, I gotta find it, okay? Ikea, they don't give you a hard time about returns, so I'm not too worried, but... What the hell did I do with the receipt? Like, I thought I put it in a safe place. I'm losing everything. I hate when I open stuff and it's like, warehouse dirty. Jeez Louise. And I'm about to make a stuffed crust DiGiorno pizza, all cheese, 
about to pop that in the oven real quick. I have not had a slice of pizza in a very long time, so I'm actually looking forward to that. Me and Ann are gonna get into that because Anthony is about to go to work, um, so he's gonna miss out. Okay, here's the light. Let's have a first look. Let's let's have a first look together. I don't even want to look. I don't. I don't. I don't even want to look at it. Okay, let's see. I think this is the right way. This way here. I love it already. Right out the box, I love it so much already. Oh my God, just looking at these black straight lines. Oh my goodness, it's giving coordinated. It's giving traditional modern, it might work. Okay, let's make sure we have all the pieces. So I'm, I'm really glad this thing came in like one full piece like this. So all I have to do is worry about um, the lights. Now, this was also the moment of truth right here, y'all. Making sure, let me get my scissors. Sansa, are you excited? Sansa is my biggest critic. She's like, girl, I don't know, child. Sansa do not be liking my projects. She don't She don't be liking it. She, she be real skeptical. So I was worried about the gold, the type of gold that this light picture would be. I didn't want it to be too, too yellow. I don't know, I don't even know what that means. Like, what does it mean for it to be too yellow? I don't know, but I was just hoping that it would be like, just like wow me when it came out of the box and kind of it is. Okay, this is a very, very easy going gold. It's not like too shiny. You know what I mean? It's not like overly polished. It's not giving champagne gold, it's giving gold gold. But you know, it's like more matted down. It's not too shiny. I didn't want it to look like brass, like shiny polished brass. I wanted it to be more of an antique gold, if that makes sense. So yeah, and I'm looking at the wiring and it looks very familiar based on what my dad taught me so i am confident that i'll be able to get these up i just have to prepare each one like and that's the tedious part having to prepare the wires for three different you know units it's gonna take me a long time i don't even know if i'm gonna finish this today but i'm gonna try i'm very excited though y'all i think this is going to work i love it already and it's not even up i was not this confident about the ikea lights it was questionable all the way to the end but with this i'm already loving it and as far as the sizing and dimensions that's another big challenge to overcome when you're doing something like this because even if you measure even if you have a tape measure in your hand and you're just measuring in the air it's not the same as actually having the product in front of you it's just not the same it's like you know you can be the biggest mathematician and have all your measurements and it still might not look right in the space that's my stove letting me know that the preheat is done okay all right Hey, a whole song. <laughs> but dimensions wise, the basket ones that are up, the rattan ones that are already up are about the same size as this. So I already know it'll work in this space. The mounting piece is slightly different from what's already up there, but it's the same science. It's the same technology. Now that I know how to do this, I'm seeing these parts in a totally different light now. It's crazy. Like what I used to just have to just ask my dad to help me with this stuff or a task rabbit. I would just pull all the stuff out of the box and just be looking at the task rabbit. Like it makes sense, right? You, you know what you're doing, right? You know, but now it's like, I know. So this stuff looks different. It, it's just, it's crazy. So I'm just gonna go ahead and assemble this. And um, I'm so freaking excited. And I'll fill you guys in um, further along the process. y'all it's the next day but of course it's the next day y'all know this stuff takes forever okay i was down here in this kitchen until about 11 p.m putting these lights in okay first of all the light fixture themselves and i'm gonna i'm gonna show them to you guys right the light fixture themselves the instructions were off okay the instructions were not good i had to really finesse i had to really use common sense i had to 
you know? They needed me to write the instructions for putting, for assembling uh, these light fixtures. They needed me to do that, okay? Um, but anyway, we survived it, got it done, got each of them assembled correctly, and got them installed into the ceiling. Y'all, I couldn't wait to throw those other light fixtures away for these new ones. I think we might have did something. Let me show y'all. Ta-da! Listen, take it in, take it in. Y'all, we might have did something. <laughs> <laughs> I really like them. I, I, I ain't gonna lie. I ain't gonna lie. I really, really like them. And so many of you guys told me that the style of our kitchen, that you thought it was modern traditional and y'all nailed it because that's exactly what's going on in here. These are so pretty. They give off a really good amount of light. Y'all, I got four 40 watt bulbs in each of them and it's so, so nice. This one is missing a bulb though because when I was testing the first one that I installed, which was that one and I hit the switch for the first time, one of them blue immediately so uh, you know and I bought exactly 12 so I got to go back to Menards and get another set but that's fine I can still kind of get the gist it looks so good in here y'all it's so perfect it is so perfect I love it but y'all let me know what y'all think because I really appreciate and respect you guys' opinions as well so let me know what you think but I got a feeling y'all gonna like these I got a feeling <laughs> it's the perfect amount of black accent there's a little bit of gold accent it's so good and the only thing I was worried about was the length like basically the height from the countertop I thought they might be a little too high so I really sat with that idea for a little while thinking are they too high up you know but the next level down would have been like down here and i'm like that might be too low so i figured i play it safe and then when anthony came home he was like oh my god i love it he's like the height is perfect so leave it don't mess with it so it might be okay but y'all let me know what you think what's what's your measurement from the counter to the bottom of your light let me know y'all because i just want to make sure before i throw all the pieces away i got my candles lit so y'all know i'm in the zone okay i'm feeling good about it here's the view from the other angle it just looks good against like the other light fixtures that I do have in the house which is nice I thought I didn't need to coordinate that but once I did I saw the benefits of it and a lot of you guys pointed that out okay see like with all the other light fixtures on and then you look at these ones and it just fits right in like they've just always been here so yeah this was easy enough to put together the only thing I'll say from the installation that I'm not too sure about is that the light bulbs have a little bit of a hum to them. If you listen closely, you can hear it. And so I'm not too sure about that. I was gonna ask my dad about that because I'm gonna see him tomorrow and just, you know, see if, if, if did I do something wrong or is it just the light fixtures? Is it the light bulbs? So we definitely wanna look into that. But if y'all have any insight before I talk to my dad, put them down below, um, it might help someone. But I was a little unsure about that. You can barely hear it, but if I get really close, I can hear it and I just wonder how to prevent that. And I know the sound itself is coming from the area where the bulbs are because I was troubleshooting and I took the bulbs out of one of the lights and the sound was eliminated. So it's definitely coming from where the bulbs are, but I just wonder why, you know? So as y'all can see, those uh, lampshades from Ikea are chilling over there in the corner. I'm about to actually take those back to Ikea shortly. I'm just waiting for Anthony to come back from the gym. And yeah, y'all, I'm so, so excited about some of the forthcoming projects I'm gonna be doing in the kitchen. I had explained some of it to you guys last night when I was vlogging, but there was a few things that I actually forgot to mention and I don't know how, but let me share them with you now. So because of all the black fixtures that I've been doing in here, I definitely want to switch out my um, faucet to a, mo a matte black faucet. Here's the thing, y'all. I've been wanting to change out this faucet anyway because this was one of the things that was already here in the house when we moved in and I really want the one that you can just tap with your hand and it automatically, you know, comes on because I'm a cook. Y'all know I be in here straight up cooking and I don't like touching too many things when I'm having like my cooking hands, you know? So I've been wanting to switch this out and this is just my sign. The folks uh, who used to live here got this from Ikea. Not a bad one, works really well. We haven't had any issues with it. I just don't like the aesthetic anymore. And speaking of aesthetics, I'm probably going to switch out the sink as well. I was telling my dad, I don't like the stainless steel look of it. It looks like a laundry room sink and I can't unsee that, right? So we're gonna switch this out to um, a white one, that true farmhouse kind of white porcelain look. That coupled with some of the other projects that I explained to you guys last night will make this kitchen a little bit more of the kitchen that I want versus the one that I moved into. And sometimes it'd be like that, you know, it's been years since we've lived here and we've just kind of dealt with the, the, the current state of the house and we've made some small changes here and there, but the kitchen was something that I just completely never even addressed ever since we've lived here because I just felt like it was a new kitchen. I knew they had freshly renovated it. They had never been used, y'all. It was still sawdust in the cabinets. Like they just 
renovated and then sold, you know? And so I felt like it was, it would be a waste of money to come in and like gut out something that was brand new, you know? I'm like, we need to figure out a way to adjust to this kitchen because it's a new kitchen. You know, kitchens are expensive to remodel. I'm like, let's just do it. And I kind of ignored it and focused on some other areas of the, areas of the house instead. But now that I'm back down on the first floor, rethinking some things, you know, I was able to figure out a way to tweak the kitchen to where it fits our aesthetic better without gutting it and like revamping it completely. So I feel like we saved a lot of money by just kind of going with the flow of the current kitchen. We made some small, you know, affordable updates and I'm pretty happy about it, y'all. Like I said, I have a few more projects to do, DIY style, and I'm gonna be sharing them with you guys, but I think so far I'm really happy with how this area looks. Like I don't really, I no longer feel like, you know, it's not my kitchen anymore. It feels a lot more like something that I would have designed myself. Good morning, it's the next day, and I just got done with an effortless blend on this wig. We did the half up, half down today, and I did a quick face, you know, uh, just to knock the sleep off, okay? We are actually headed out to meet up with my dad and Mumu and stuff, and we're gonna do the birthday thing, the museum, and then go to lunch and all that stuff. And it's kind of snowing today, it, it, what okay it's like some kind of wintry mix going on outside i am hating that but we're still gonna make the most of it i'm really excited because we're going for ethiopian and i haven't had it in a while y'all know it's my favorite cuisine i got ava up and adam and Anne is going to come along as well so it's going to be a fun little day unfortunately anthony can't make it because of work but we still gonna have a good time so let me get myself together and out the door okay i'm in full mom mode today walking around that museum so we're gonna do the crossbody with the gold hardware matching my gold Amazon earrings y'all if y'all don't get these earrings these are my favorite hoops at the moment like so well made they got a little weight to them they just look so good I'll link these for you guys if you want to check them out they're on Amazon they're my favorite earrings like right now I can wear these every single day universal thread shirt that I wore actually recently and I ran it back I love this shirt tied up in the front forever 21 jeans and my Yeezys because we're gonna be on the move okay <laughs> I gotta be able to keep up with two littles hey you guys we're back home listen I am scrambling in the kitchen trying to get Ann something to eat really quick she did not you know really eat at the Ethiopian place, you know, she ate the injera, but that was about it. So I need to make sure that she's got something familiar. So we're just gonna do a grilled cheese. Right, Annie Boo? Wait. Okay. Something real quick, honey. Um, Ava is upstairs. I put her in her bed because, you know, after the car ride, I thought she was gonna be sleeping. And um, looks like she's ready for her next feeding. So I gotta go grab her. But first, grilled cheese. <laughs> first, let's get this grilled cheese. So when I came home, Anthony was gone to work already, which was expected. And um, he was sad that he missed out on the fun today. We have a really good time, y'all. Like, I gotta go back to the Field Museum like with a little bit more time to really peruse without kids and things, you know, but um, yeah, I feel like I've arrived at a really different place in my life in terms of like my worldview and like science and like the earth itself. And like, I feel like when I was coming along, you know, when we were in school and stuff, I really didn't care about this area of study. But like now that I'm an adult, I'm, this is all I think about, you know? And um, you know, I just, I, I really love to ponder like the world and like, its inhabitants and it's just so fascinating. It is absolutely fascinating. I had a really fun time um, in the museum today and even with my dad, he was really excited about seeing the ancient, the ancient Egyptian exhibits because for all of us, it was so different. Like it hit so different after having gone to Egypt and like being on the land and being able to experience everything up close and personal in the flesh and then seeing the exhibits, it's like, you were able to appreciate it more, but then also you're like, man, I'm glad I actually went, you know, because like it's so much more immersive, but it was really, really good. And I, I love that. That's what I love about traveling so, so much. Those moments like that, when you're able to really feel as though you experienced a place and you can relate more to the, educational material when you actually go. That's the key. Yeah, I don't think we have any more turkey. You're gonna have to have it turkeyless. But let me get this going so that I can get Ava squared away. Girl, 
these kids, this this age gap, okay, <laughs> making grilled cheeses and bottles, okay, it's, it gets real out here, all right? <laughs> but yeah, Dad had a really good time, y'all. He really, really, truly did. He had a blast. He loves stuff like that. And we were only there for a short while, so we didn't even put a dent in the museum, honestly. Definitely gotta go back. And the food was delicious, y'all. The food was so good. Andy Boo, we drink your living water. And I didn't really get to vlog a whole lot. Y'all know how it is, y'all know how I am, you know, people didn't really ask to be vlogged, neither did they even expect it, so I try to keep it to a minimum, but my dad was very um, appreciative of his experience today, you know, celebrating his birthday and all of that. And it's always good having y'all, so here's the thing, all right, I'm gonna go ahead and get out of here. <laughs> Because I have a lot to tend to, girl. Sansa is over here uh, laying on her side, looking at me like, where's my dinner? Okay, it's about almost 6 p.m., so it's starting to come to that time. Everybody's ready for dinner and all that stuff, so it's almost time to start getting bathtubs ran and all of that. So I had a really good day today. I feel super fulfilled. I feel filled up. Um, it's a good day, right? And so on that note, I'm going to leave you guys with that energy. And... Um, I'm gonna flip this uh, grilled cheese and I'll talk to you guys in my next one. I love you guys so much. Mwah. Bye.